once again to our show that is called Real Shame. It's a show where we watch movies that we should have seen, but we haven't, but we are now. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. Earlier in the week we were watching some, or this week we are watching some movies I haven't seen. And earlier in the week we watched The Color Purple, which was a movie based on a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. And Andy wanted to pair that with another movie that's based on a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. And that movie is today... A strange and helpless young woman finds her way to the home of a mother and daughter, and soon dark secrets from the past begin to be revealed in Beloved. We got spare rooms. Could stay tonight if you had a mind to. You don't sound too steady in the offer. Oh, it's truly meant. It's just I hope you'll pardon my house. My house. I like the sound of that. Come on in. So Beloved was directed by the late Jonathan Demme. Jonathan Demme got his start in the 1970s directing, working with somebody that a lot of people get their start with, and that was Roger Corman. He got to start working with Roger Corman, did some movies, continued on, did music videos, worked yeah. with David Byrne and the Talking Heads on some of their stuff, did Married to the Mob and movies like that in the 80s, and then he struck gold with a little movie called The Silence of the Lambs, which came out in 1991, won several Oscars, including... Best Picture and Jonathan Demme won an Oscar for Best Director. His final film was a movie I haven't seen called Ricky and the Flash with Meryl Streep. And I don't remember even who else is in that, but I know it has Meryl Streep in it. And the movie was written, so last time I mentioned there's a little bit of a connection with Color Purple. Well, I mean, there's more than one connection, but there's one connection in particular I wanted to mention with Color Purple and Beloved. Color Purple stars Akoja Buja as Nettie Harris, both the young and the old Nettie Harris, because they put some old age, older age mm -hmm. makeup on her. She's not super old whenever she meets up with Celie at the end, but they've got they, they've aged her a little bit. She is mostly an actress, although she hasn't done a ton of movies in her filmography. She has one writing credit, and it's for this movie. Oh. She co-wrote the screenplay for Beloved. This is her one screenplay credit, but she co-wrote it with a guy named Richard Lagravenese, he wrote movies like The Fisher King, The Ref, which we did in December, Bridges of Madison County, The Horse Whisperer, and a more recent film he's done is the movie Unbroken. And also the third movie, or sorry, the third person to collaborate on this screenplay for Beloved is Adam Brooks. He wrote movies like French Kiss and Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock. And I think Nicole Kidman is in that as well. I haven't seen it. The cinematography is by Tak Fujimoto. I mentioned him because he and Jonathan Demme work together on basically everything. They He's shot... I think most or if not all of Jonathan Demme's movies. He shoots Silent Lambs? He did shoot oh, Silence and nice. Lambs, yes. He did. Uh, yeah, so cinematography by Tak Fujimoto. Score by Rachel Portman. Rachel Portman did not get nominated for this movie, but she did a movie in 1999, which she did get nominated for her score, and that was for The Steiner House Rules, which I know is your favorite. Yeah, but that. she did the score for Beloved. Again, no, no nomination for her for this movie, but I, I, I think the score's good. And this movie was adapted from a 1987 Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by Toni Morrison, and Tony, T-O-N-I, Tony is a woman, not a man. Tony Morrison. Uh, so the book, Pulitzer, the Pulitzer Prize winning novel, Beloved, that came out in 1987, the rights were purchased by Oprah Winfrey. She was a fan of the book. She wanted to make the movie. And I think she bought the rights to the book back in 1987 after it was released. She scooped up those rights and said, hey, I want to make this movie. But it took a, a decade to get the movie made. But she stars as Seta. She also gets a producer credit because she was heavily involved in the making of this film. Danny Glover, who we just saw in The Color Purple, plays a much nicer character in this movie. He plays Paul D. Well, we also saw Oprah in The Color Purple. Yes, we also saw Oprah in and, The Color Purple. That's and true. Uh, one more thing is, mm -hmm. from what I read, Oprah only saw her and Danny Glover as those two characters. Well, she well, got her wish because she, yeah. she, she, she was in control, I she think. She was pushing for it, but go on. Tandy Newton, uh, it was Tandy Newton at the time, now it's Tandyway Newton. 
She plays Beloved. So I looked it up. She was actually born Melanie Tandiwe Newton. And when she got her start acting, she dropped the W from Tandiwe and became just Tandy Newton. She dropped the Melanie, the whole first name. So she started off her career as Tandy Newton, even though her name was actually Tandiwe Newton. Mm. And now she's restored the W. And now she's being credited as Tandiwe Newton. Not Melanie Tandiwe Newton, but Tandiwe Newton. Anyways, I read that Tandiwe actually means Beloved. Oh, so it's appropriate that she plays Beloved. Uh, Kimberly Elise plays Oprah's daughter, Seth's daughter, Denver. Kimberly Elise was relatively new to the film world, although she had done a few movies, I think, before this. And she had done Set It Off, which, which is a notable film that she did before she did this movie, the bank robber movie with Queen Latifah and Jada Pinkett. Bea Richards plays Baby Suggs. This was her final film role. She'd been acting for uh, 40 or 50 years at this point. She passed away a couple of years after this movie was made, but she had the good fortune to star with Sidney Poitier, who we mentioned recently because he passed away, unfortunately. She starred in... Uh, guess who's coming to dinner? I just wrote down the in, guess an acronym. Guess who's coming to dinner? And in the heat of the night, both in 1967 and both with Sidney Poitier. Lisa Gay Hamilton plays the young version of Seta. Lisa Gay Hamilton is primarily an actress, but she also directed a documentary about Bea Richards, who plays Baby Sooks. She directed a documentary called Bea, A Black Woman Speaks. And then the last couple of people that I want to mention are Wes Bentley's briefly in the movie. He's not in a, a, a large amount, doesn't have a lot of lines, but he would, of course, go on to be an American Beauty a year after this, and that movie really took off, one best picture, all that stuff. And Jason Robards, who has no lines in this movie. He just pulls up on a horse, but he's in the movie for, I don't know, two minutes or something. He plays Mr. Bodwin. Those are the last couple of people that I wanted to mention. Anyways, this movie I did see when it came out in October of 1988. Oh, wow. I, I think I'm one of the few people that saw this because nobody saw this movie. <laughs> According to Jonathan Demme, I read a quote from him. He said it only played for like four weeks. And wow. it did not, it was a bomb. It did not make its money back. I'll talk about that later. But I did see this movie before. I didn't remember a whole lot about it, but I did like it back then. But this is a movie that you've never seen. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Never heard of it either. Okay. Well, I mean, that's not surprising because, yeah. I mean, it came and went at the box office. Yeah, I mean, and it has been 24 years ago now yeah. or close to. So what did you know? I guess nothing about it. I knew Beloved. nothing about it. I just knew it had a picture of uh, Danny Glover and Oprah, and Oprah on, the, on cover, the front. Right. So you went into it pretty blind. Pretty blind. And you were pretty... Whoa. Yeah, this movie just like, like... What the... This is this all movie, kinds of crazy. Yeah, this movie just like starts off at night and just goes like yeah. it just it, there's no like build up at all it just yeah. like you go you you're you're on for a ride right yeah. um and it just goes and it, uh, and i i admire it a little bit for that because like i mean obviously it's our feature reviews so we're gonna spoil it there's no like banging you know banging around the bush there's no like hints or anything that the house is haunted you're like oh no the house is haunted yeah like this dog's yeah, getting flung it starts around. with yeah. a dog getting flown yeah. across the room yeah. uh, a very fake looking dog. again i don't want them to harm a real dog no, yeah. but the little model that they use looked pretty bad i thought but i mean this movie just goes there and there's like uh so it's not like oh is it or is it not on it it's yeah. like no this house is haunted we're in a supernatural thriller this is what's going on yeah um i that being said i i did not like this very much it just also, it just felt very, uh, I, I always feel like I want to compare it to movies I've never seen, but it feels very like Carrie to me. I've never seen Carrie, but it just feels like all the shots I've seen in Carrie, like kind of Carrie, where it just feels very like overt and it uses a lot of like, especially when the house is haunted and stuff, it uses a lot of uh, colorization of the movie and stuff like that. You know the reds and stuff like that. To, lighting, yeah. The the emphasize it and that I feel like that's a very like carry thing and also like Jonathan Demi does a couple things in the movie that took me completely out of the movie. One was um, whenever uh, Pauly D and Seti meet like outside the house, he does these series of close ups between them. He just cuts from one close up. Yeah, it's like POV, 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 POV. Yeah, and it yeah. I was just like. I just it took me completely out of the movie because it felt you know it's not it's not it's not the way film language is done nowadays or was done back then. It was just so odd that it kind of took me out of the movie because I'm like, this is weird. Why is this happening? And then I realized what he was doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it might not be something that a casual viewer would recognize, but for me, someone who likes film and studied film, 
as soon as it did that, I'm like, what? Why is this kicking me out of the movie? And I'm like, I, I recognize that oh. because I feel like he does that several times in the movie. He does. When, he when does. Characters yeah, yeah. are having di- a dialogue between them. It's POV, POV, POV. Yeah. And they're at the dinner table and stuff when like beloved's there for the first time. It's mm-hmm. doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so is, is th- that stuff. I guess it can, can can kind of work. I think that stuff is risky, right? Because it can work, but it also can do what it did to me and just throw me out of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so. I ultimately, I think the story is really interesting. The story that you have this, um, you know, Oprah's character gets steady, who has like been through so much torment and anguish and, you know, in her life, like her, her, her mom being killed, you know, being raised, you know, as a slave and all this kind of stuff. And then the part where, and then to a part where she thinks that, you know, her old, a master, I guess, I don't know a better term to get, is going to come and claim her kids and then she has to kill her kids. Like, that is such a harrowing and horrifying tale to, to tell that I think it's really interesting and not something that I ever thought of before. I just don't think this movie does a good job in telling that story. And it's, again, like I said with The Color Purple, it's something I like to see that's done a little bit more, um, less stylized. I like to see it done. But, I mean, like, I never even thought about that kind of experience and what it would be like to go through that. And that's the great thing about movies. It kind of gets, puts you in those people's uh, shoes that you're not normally in and all that kind of stuff. So I like the story. I mean, like, I don't know, like, I think the story is interesting, captivating and scary and all that stuff. I just don't think the movie does anything good with it. And just honestly, like the movie is just really off putting for, for me because it's so stylized and so, so out there so i i guess that's kind of where i where i fall on it does that make sense no yes but <laughs> my question is as opposed to stylized like how do you want it to be told i want it to be told like more like a like i mean and, and the other thing is if you told me the same guy who directed this directed songs of the labs i wouldn't have believed you like no I, I feel like they're two different they feel like two different oh they're very different yeah i mean there's yeah. different stories but i feel like the the visual style and the the visual language are drastically different between the two. Yeah. Like I would have wanted something more like, I mean, you know, something more like, like a Schindler's list or something more like, uh, you know, I'm thinking about color purple, something like Schindler's list, something like Munich, stuff like that. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, 12 years a slave, you know, something that's really grounded and like that shows these kind of, because I feel like this movie goes for more of a psychological thriller aspect mm. of it instead of playing it more realistic, right? Mm. They're kind of... And there is some supernatural stuff in there, but I feel like they kind of want to go more into the carry supernatural, stylized way of telling it rather than like a grounded kind of like... Like a conjuring kind of way of telling it where you have these supernatural elements, but it's really told in a very grounded kind of way, right? So that's the way I wish it would have gone. I mean... And I have a preference for those kind of movies. Like you and I have talked and you know, I'm not a big fan of very stylized movies. So that might be a, you know, a, a more of a preference for me, mm-hmm. but that's kind of where I wanted to go. I wanted it to be like, no, no, this is real. Let's, let's show you these real horrors in a very like realistic way. And so you can like deal with it. Not in a, you know, uh, let's put some red gels on and the house is on it mm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Does that, does any of that make sense? It does. Okay. It does. So that's, that's kind of where, where, where I am with it. Um, but so <laughs> I feel like, I feel like whenever I do my reviews on movies, like half the people are just like, okay, <laughs> I've had enough of this show. Next thing. So, um, that's okay. where I fall in beloved. You said you've seen it once before. Yeah. What do you remember anything about, I, Leading up to it or seeing it in the theaters? I, I remember. I, I mean, I it's, it's, it's been so long. I, I remember liking it and I actually saw it. I think my roommate and I both went and saw it, maybe at the same time or maybe like very close together. Because what I made remember you us want having, to see it, do you know? I just saw the trailer for it. And back then, you know, I mean, I, I obviously <laughs> nowadays we're spoiled. We have 15 million streaming services. So there's so much yeah, yeah. content to watch. But back then, you know, it wasn't like that. There were zero streaming services. You know, you either see something on at the theater or you see it on DVD or VHS back in the day. Yeah. And I think at the time, you know, because it came out in the latter part of the year and it intentionally, you know, because they wanted it to be nominated for Oscars and, and whatnot. Yeah. 
I saw the trailer for it and it just looked interesting to me. So I, I went and saw it. But my, I remember my roommate and I, we both liked it and, you know, having like long discussions about it and kind of, you know, the style of it and everything else. And we were big fans of it, but it, it's been so long since I've seen it. You know, it's, it's left my mind. But I, I, I will say I liked it locked in and I think I like it even more now. Oh, I wow. really, really oh. like this movie a lot. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not with you okay. on, on what you said. I, I like all that. Stuff because it, it is a supernatural story. It is a ghost story. And you know me, I don't like long movies a lot of times. Or I feel like long movies don't need to be as long as they are. This movie, I don't care that it's damn near three hours. Oh, see, I like I completely, I, I saw months. that. I complete. I am into this movie hook, line, and sinker. Oh. I absolutely dig this movie. It's so strange and weird and mystical and enchanting in a weird way and gothic in a weird way you know i mean it's just it's got so much weird stuff i think tandy newton that that role is super challenging because she basically has to play a baby in a grown woman's body and she also has to do she has she does several nude scenes where she she shows it all you know i mean and so she she had to be fearless to take on this role and i think she absolutely nails it it's weird it's strange, but she absolutely nails it. I mean, I think she brings to it what that part needed. I like the fact that she just kind of comes out of the swamp, basically, dressed in, like, funeral garb, shows up at the house. She's got bugs and stuff crawling yeah, on her. And you know, and, yeah, ladybugs and stuff crawling on her. And when she first starts to talk, it's, it's as though it's somebody who hasn't talked for years, which... I guess presumably she has it, but she sounds like she's got a frog in her throat. You know, yeah. she's like, me, yeah. and then eventually she starts to sound like a normal person, but she still talks like a baby yeah. and everything and acts like a baby and eats all like, you know, exaggerated with Wants chewing and her really face is all skewed. Foods like a baby. Exactly. All, yeah. all that kind of thing. But I, I, I am with this movie on every step of the journey. Oh, wow. Like, I think it's really, really this cool. Movie, and I think this that, movie just went like this. Yeah, I was like right I here. I think that, like, that Jonathan Demme's, I, I, I like the POV stuff. I don't mind any of that oh. stuff. I, I think all of it, 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 I did, I notice it, but I, you know, again, to me, it just kind of adds to the weirdness of the movie because I think this movie is criminally underseen and criminally underrated. I mean, I think it did get, I mean, it is fresh or whatever on Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, nobody saw it. Yeah. And if I mention this movie to somebody, nobody knows what it is. Is it even out you on know? like Blu-ray or no. something like that? No. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, it's, it has no Blu-ray release at this point. Yeah. So you're you're it's DVD it's, yeah. and it's not on a streaming service. I don't think you know, right? So it's DVD or VHS or or nothing or pirate or high, sale to high seas or something. And I what I have to do is I have to figure out like a movie that I like that is very like stylized because for me like yeah the stylization was distracted me from the story right and i felt like it actually almost um like it almost um knocked like the 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 horror of the story out from from underneath it right like it it almost did it a disservice to me yeah because it was like trying to be so weird and so stylized that it kind of downplayed like this you know steady what happened to her and for me, that just felt like a big disservice. But yeah, I, I understand for you that you probably didn't get that at all. But again, well, I, I mean, I, I and I, I do agree with you. I, I don't think that it should diminish what happened to yeah, her, yeah, but yeah. I, I don't think that it does. I, I do think there's more emphasis, arguably, you know, on kind of the supernatural stuff rather than kind of what she went through. But I, I don't mind that. You know, as much, I yeah. guess, maybe. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, and, and because there's some very shocking graphic nudity and scenes and, you know, rape scenes and, and whatnot in this yes, movie. Yes. They, they don't pull any punches, right? No. I mean, especially the part, one of the parts that it was very jarring to me, because obviously I didn't remember, is when they first come back from the carnival and that's when they first see Beloved. She's yeah. made her way to the house. Oprah immediately has to run over to the side and basically urinate yeah. slash water breaks kind of thing because it's representative of, it's almost like she's given birth, birth again. Yeah. And now her daughter is back reincarnated yeah. as the age that she would have been had she lived. But just to see her kind of, you know, yeah. bent over and, yeah. you know, basically urinating or whatever, is it, I was like, what the hell? You know, just yeah. kind of weird. But it's things like that, I think, that make this movie fascinating in, in a very, very kind of macabre sort of way. But yeah, no, I, I really, I really like this movie. I like the way that it unfolds. I, I just like the whole, I, I love 
baby Suggs, the, the grandmother basically kind of yeah. character. And when she's preaching on the rock and how the camera circles around her and yeah. circles around her and she's like, children come and the children come. And she's like, laugh and they laugh. And then she's like, oh, you know, adults, you know, male, male adults or whatever come and, and do that, you know, and women weep and all this stuff. It's, it's, so, it's just so powerful. I mean, all of that kind of juxtaposition with that and what goes on with the Tan, Tandy Newton or Tandy Way Newton character, I, I just, I, I eat it up. Like, it's, it's funny because when, you know, obviously, you know, we, we, we figure out what movies we're going to watch and you know, we put them on the list and, and or, or, you know, put them on the list of, of what we're going to film. I was thinking, okay, I'm probably going to not like Beloved as much as I liked it back then. I just felt that way. You know, I just kind of yeah. had that feeling and yeah. I felt like Color Purple, I'd probably like more. And I think Color Purple is probably about the same. I, and again, I think I understood Color Purple more and got more out of it. Yeah. But this movie like went way up for me. Oh, Beloved crazy. went way up for me. So yeah, I was happy that we watched it again and and again me who's not known for liking long movies i don't care that it's you know 3 hours i, I really i was i was in it the whole way i, I was felt just, I, I was fascinated and transfixed by yeah. it yeah i totally get that i felt every minute of this movie <laughs> well sorry no, sorry no, about no, that no, no, no. uh i i would say I, I mean the movie's not i don't i don't perfect i don't begrudge watching it like it's yeah. not well, like you said you you can appreciate the the story kind of the ghost yeah. story of it you just don't like the kind of the style that yeah. it was told it's so right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah um I, I think if if i was to nitpick anything about this movie is I kind of wish Oprah would have stayed behind the scenes. I don't think she's bad in this movie, don't get me wrong. I think she does just fine as Seta, but still when I look at her, more so in the color purple, probably because she has a much larger role in this, I can't help but see Oprah, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> So it, there's a little bit of that going on, but that's a minor thing. I mean, I, I kind of wish that they would have had a more established actress. Again, not that I think Oprah was bad in this film. I think yeah, she does yeah. quite good. But I kind of wish that she would have had somebody else play. You know, and everybody else is the same. Danny Glover's great. Tandy Wade Newton is great. Kimberly Lee's is great. Bea Rich is great. All that stuff. Over Winry is fine. But yeah. I kind of wish that somebody else would have played that role. But that's just a, a minor thing. But other than that, I, I'm down with this movie. I, I really cool. like it. But again, this is a movie that I can't really recommend it to that many people because it's so bizarre. Yeah, yeah, it's, I just don't know that I know that many people that would that would like it. You know, I think most people would be like, uh, you're weird. We don't want to talk to you anymore. You like this movie? Uh -uh. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been there Strange. with other movies for sure. Uh, so as I mentioned, this movie bombed at the box office. Me and my roommate may have been two of the only people that went and saw it. It was uh, made for a budget of $80 million and apparently it only made back $23 million. So it was, it was way under and it only got one nomination at the Academy Awards. Of course, 1998 was the year that Saving Private Ryan came out. Shakespeare in Love won Best Picture. This got nominated for Best Costume Design only. No acting awards. Wow. And guess what won Best Costume Design instead of it? Shakespeare in Love. Shakespeare in Love, yeah. exactly. Uh, and I, I like the score by Rachel Portman. I think that it adds to the movie quite a bit because it's kind of cacophonous at times and it's, again, kind of jarring, but I think that goes yeah. along with the I feel with like the there's like a lot of buzzing and like insect sounds in the score there, maybe there, I'm there probably one, is there, yeah. there might be yeah it's it's weird but it's 78 percent fresh on rotten tomatoes 71 percent audience score it did get two thumbs up but leonard malton two out of four stars right. he, he didn't like it as much so all right well that was beloved on these wednesday episodes we like to answer viewers questions and we picked one this week because we have two movies count them one two starring one danny glover and we've decided to maybe talk about or pick a few movies that he's done that are favorites of ours. Yes. So um, do you have one or do you have want to go over a couple of things? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know what your number one pick I'm is. I'm sure you know what my number one pick is. Okay, I, I, then, never, then I won't mention <laughs> that until you mention it. Uh, I was going to say, so I think we both kind of agreed just because... There's so many movies that come out nowadays. Yeah, yeah. We probably haven't seen a lot of his more recent stuff, so we're kind of primarily looking at 80s, 90s, 90s and yeah. maybe early 2000s, something like that. But just kind of glancing through that list, I will point out, before I get to like my number one pick, uh, you know, my favorite Danny Glover. I mean, I could probably pick Beloved, but I won't. I'll pick something else uh, for, for the Danny Glover movie. But I like Grand Canyon a lot. That's Lawrence yeah, right, Kasdan's... Right. 
He did so. He did the ensemble piece with the big chill. This is another kind of ensemble piece, although it's not like a I group of friends getting together. You mentioned that when we talked about the big chill. Yeah, because I almost paired it with the big chill, okay. but I ended up going with with something else. But I like Grand Canyon again. That that's a more dramatic. That doesn't have as much comedy as yeah. Big Chill, but it's a more dramatic kind of ensemble piece that he did. Danny Glover has a very small, in fact, it's uncredited role in The Rainmaker as one of the as a judge, mm-hmm. which I really like, but I, I wouldn't really count that as my favorite movie because he's barely in it. Uh, but yeah, so I've got kind of two that I'm yeah. bat- batting between. I mean, I'll do a call out to, uh, and maybe you'll mention this one, to Predator 2. I think that's, I don't, I haven't watched it recently. I don't think it's a great movie, but it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. The first movie, Predator movie is fun. Yeah. And oh, this, I love the first Predator. And this yeah. movie... You would think, I thought, and I thought Predator 2 didn't hold up as well, but in watching it, I'm like, oh, no, no. This is al- this is almost as good as the first Predator movie. Yeah, so, so I, I love Predator, but yeah, Predator 2 is one of those movies that it, it fell so short of Predator yeah. 1 that I think it was a huge letdown for people. But reviewing it, you know, in hindsight and years later, yeah. I think pe- a lot more people have come around to it as exactly its own right. kind of thing. If you don't really compare it strictly with the first Predator, it's super fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super fun movie. No, I 100% agree. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, you want to do your runner up or? Or do you want me to talk about mine? Uh, yeah, I, my I'll do my runner up. My runner up is a movie that does I I feel like doesn't get enough love. But again, I'm basing this on seeing it years ago. <laughs> but I did like it then, and it switched back. Have you ever seen that? With no, I'm gonna, it's got Danny Glover and Dennis Quaid. I don't it's, think I'm I, I, I think it's a good, intriguing is kind it a of train movie. I, it does take place on a train. I think mostly or, or halfway. I, I, I can't remember. Again, I'm vague on the details. Dark territory. But but it's it's kind of a it, it's like a serial killer kind of movie. Okay. And it's like who you know who's killing you know obviously who who's what's the identity of the serial killer or whatever. But I, I think that's kind of a fun and surprising movie. That's kind of my runner up, I would say. Well, very cool. I think I'm gonna go very basic here and say uh you know probably my first exposure to Danny Glover it was. The Lethal Weapon movies, and hell yeah, I'm just a big fan of those those movies. I, I haven't seen, I've seen the first Lethal Weapon recently, but two, three, and four I haven't seen in years, so I don't know how well they hold up. I think I saw four in theaters, <laughs> but because you watched them recently, right? I did. I watched. I, I watched all four. Yeah, and I, I remember like I, I think four. the first two are great. The yeah. third and the fourth, eh, not so much. Not a big fan of Pesci or Jet Li. No, I mean they're, just, they're you know they're yeah. both watchable and, and and I mean if you're gonna watch *Lethal Weapon* and you got time, might as well watch the four of them. But I would say three and four, your expectations yeah. need to be yeah, yeah. a lot lower. I, I think one and two are really great. Though. I think Mel Gibson and Danny Glover did a great job of just being, you know, the, oh, yeah. at odds and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. that's I, I just have a fondness for. Uh, was it he's he was Murtaugh right? Or, I can or never Riggs? remember which one is Riggs and which one is. You know, Murtaugh. I say that, and then now I'm gonna. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we. Yeah, it's easy to it's easy to glance at it and see. Okay, he is Murtaugh. Okay, yeah. Roger Murtaugh. So I like him, <laughs> yeah. and he has a family, and it just seems like he has a great like mm-hmm. relationship with his family and stuff like that. And he's too old for this shit. I mean, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's that's me. <laughs> no, that's a solid choice. So I'm gonna pick a movie that I I know I, I'm surprised this isn't your favorite movie of his Maybe because I, I know how much you love the director you love and admire the director but it's the royal tenenbaums <laughs> wes anderson's royal tenenbaums so i i know i said i say all that jokingly because i know you're not a big wes anderson fan and i and i, I understand your reasoning for that but so royal tenenbaums is very early in wes anderson's career since i think his third movie and I'm not as big a Wes Anderson fan as I used to be, but I still really love his first few movies. Yeah. Bottle Rocket, Rushmore, and Royal Tenenbaums are, I would say, my favorite movie of Wes Anderson is either Rushmore or Royal Tenenbaums. So it's between those two. But I, I've seen Royal Tenenbaums so, so many times. I've always really loved that movie. And Danny Glover's in that, and he's great. And I like that movie probably the best. Awesome. And I love Beloved, as I said. <laughs> yep. But, all right. All right. Well, now it's your turn. Let us know what your favorite Danny Glover movies are. Is it one that we mentioned, or is it one that we missed over? Maybe it's Gone Fishing. Pure luck. <laughs> Pure luck, or something like that. Leave a comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube, or shoot us an email, realshame at gmail.com. That's where we answer viewer questions like this, and we need your viewer questions. So please send us your viewer questions, uh, realshame at gmail.com. 
And uh, that's it for the show. Please like and subscribe and do all that social media stuff. It really does help spread the word. And stay tuned next week as we watch some movies from his list of shame, but it's also secretly my list of shame. (laughs) But most importantly, it's from his list of shame. And we'll see you soon, guys. Bye.